So the Essen Techno Classic's been running since 89, and my German mechanic always used to say I needed to go to this as a Mercedes nut job. So off we went from Australia, and I've turned up to this uh, five-day event, and your mind blows as soon as you walk into it. Uh, now, there's eight halls. Hall one is uh, Mercedes, and these are companies primarily selling them, and the scope of cars is just incredible. And you can see here from Galwings to Evo 2s to... <laughs> 2.3 16s, SLRs, um, CLK DDMs, um, and this is just one seller, just selling these immaculate cars, like I think that's 300 grand euro for that uh, Evo 2. Multiple SLRs throughout the eight halls, multiple SLSs in various forms, and you know, I don't think I've seen an Evo 2 in person, so a lot of these cars are just really cool to, to see in the flesh. Um, not having seen them before. Um, the CLK DTM, a few years ago, I saw one lined up at the uh, Nürburgring in the uh, tourist um, car park, but really cool looking vehicle, SL65. Um, there were multiple SL65s of various generations at this event. Um, if we saw one of them in the colony down here, um, we'd be excited enough. AMG Black Series and Pros, um, you're not going to see that stuff in our neck of the woods. Now the event's in German, um, not a problem. Most of the people there speak English. Um, the German population is um, always very pleasant to visit as a tourist. Um, you can see here the price at the bottom there, 500,000 euro for that SL65. And so this hall had sellers um, and clubs. Um, primarily focusing on MB, but you'd see various cars scattered through each hall. And this very long video is gonna run through halls one to four, lump five to eight together, and show the sales areas outside. Uh, the AMG area here is on the right, which will run through. Um, you can see the louder 201 here, um, the replica, I presume. Um, that's a huge side indicator or repeater. I don't know what that's about. Um, now, if you had an AMG GTR with this black livery, um, it meant you would order an AMG one. Uh, the 275 AMG ones have now started being delivered, I understand. Um, we'd just seen one in the in the display room at AMG in a falter buck a few days earlier. It's part of our holiday. Um, some very nice cars scattered around the hall. Um, this one, I don't think it was any particular affiliation, just demonstration. Um, a red sow um, replica. Um, this 380126 AMG, uh, there is at the 26 minute mark, again a very long video, um, you'll see some more AMG period proper cars. Um, that 116 was used to teach limo drivers how to smash um, would-be terrorists and other villains out of the way. That's why they put the bumper on it. It was also a test vehicle for the M117, um, which they fit to that vehicle at MB. So there's that GTR again. Um, I've seen what, one of them on the sites in Australia. This was Klaus Ludwig, the DTM driver's W or S210. Uh, they fit a six liter motor, and I think it was an M120. Um, I was having some English-German translation issues. Um, again, GTR Blacks. Uh, there's an SLR club. I can't imagine there's too many members. Um, I didn't quite get those 722s in the visorless thing. I appreciate the throwback, but um, I just think of Jim Carrey eating bugs um, in his movie when I look at these things um, regardless it would go like a monster and sound like um, thunder so I do not think I'll be seeing one of them <laughs> again SL club on the left um, 124 club on the right um, there's the replica Jackie X vehicle on the left which he won the Paris Dakar in the 80s with an M110 I don't know how he won with that thing in there driving through the dunes um, but um, Awesome effort to create that. Um, the Unimog guys were cool. We'd visited their museum in Gaganau just a few days before. Um, 6.9 for sale. This one had the orthopedic front seats. Uh, it's very rudimentary. You just pull that strap up and down. A little balloon goes up and down. Um, I have one of them in my 123 donor car here. Um, across the road um, is a blue 6.3 for sale. These 111s were everywhere, the convertibles. Um, they are expensive vehicles now. Um, very cool to see them in significant numbers and perhaps they're the next big ticket even if they've already taken off more than the pagodas. 
Um, now the 600s, again, you just see things that you hadn't thought of or seen before. Uh, this one's being stored with these pins out the side of the jack points, which I don't know if they're supposed to be stored like that. Um, a way of making sure the suspension doesn't collapse. I would have thought Benz would have provided better jacks than blocks of wood, but um, very nice 600 sitting there. Um, quite a few around the, the traps. Um, HK Engineering was uh, just dominating here with these gull wings. The state of these cars was great. Um, the white one interior had not been restored. It, it was owned by a US race car driver and that was the reason they hadn't restored the interior mechanically. It was reportedly sound. Um, I think the gull wings are going for about one and a half to two and a half million euro at this event. In various states, supposedly it's about six to eight hundred grand to restore one to good standard. Um, you can see um, convertibles, pre-war stuff, um, looks fantastic, but I don't know too much about it. Um, the bloke, I think that was a 959, just having a, a chat to someone on the phone, prospective customer. Now these gull wings are just fantastic. I'd like to say the only reason I don't have one is because I don't make them in right-hand drive, but um, I don't think I can scrounge up a couple of million euro. Um, these 111s, Brabus, um, basically just had convertibles on display for their restorative arm. Uh, very, very nice vehicles. Um, I think maybe the movie The Hangover is to blame for them taking off. Um, a 210E60, um, you will not see these very often. Um, you might want to pause the video to have a look. Uh, there you go, one of 200, I think. Uh, 58,000 Ks, I think it's 160,000 euro. Ooh, apologies. 80,000 euro bargain. So, uh, very cool car. Um, down here, really see even nice um, E55, so CL65. Uh, this at 6.3, which is a lovely paint color. I don't think that Zircon Blue is great on uh, any of these old models. Um, there are a few classic AMGs. There's a 3.4 with an M, was it M102 motor. Um, so not a um, 36, but 300E 3.4 with all the trimmings inside. The white dashes and the, the body kit. Um, these cars had paperwork on the front showing their um, heritage. Uh, this M110 280 was cool. Um, the bloke said there was a lot of interest in this thing. 120,000 euro. I don't think it'd have too much power. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't just put an M117 in there in the day, but um, with all the blacked out trim looks very cool. Got the Recaros. Um, I'm sure you can't see the Speedo with those steering wheels. It's notorious. Um, paperwork included. Um, looked really cool and ironically you can buy quite a few models whether it's 118 or even 187s with these AMG trims on these and there's plenty of model shops um, or model dealers at this event <laughs> so on the other side we'll come to the SL60 by Brabus um, and I think there was a couple of them there at the event And again, a very long video. I just uh, found it hard to cut anything out of this thing because it was just eye-opening to see these vehicles. Sorry, there's my uh, reflection. Try not to bang the camera on the car. That probably wouldn't go down well for me. So the uh, Brabus SL60. I think that was... Um, M117, uh, not an M117, M119 is it? 5.0 bored out. Uh, looks like an early one with the square slats on the side. Um, this was a, uh, I don't know if any tuning had been done on this pre-update 126, but if you go to 26 minutes, you'll see um, some 123s and 126s which look like that had the genuine engine mods done by AMG back in the day um, in, in the sales horse segment of the video. I think that was about 25, 26 minutes. Still looked kind of cool. 
in the S class section, and there's the um, bumper car in the background. Another six liter. Um, just look, it looked pretty cool with the blacked out badges. Um, two of these things here is just Troppo. 300k Speedo from Brabus. This one looked really straight with the 129 plate. I'm not sure how the Germans, if they can get sort of custom and pick the last numbers, but that's pretty cool. I saw a lot of these driving around with their model number. That's the last three digit of various things from 911s to 993s. And um, there's the SL Club. So, um, the 500, 107. And the poor, unloved sibling of the group, the 107 SLC. I'm sure its time will come. Um, now, the SL Club had bought this body off Merck um, as a right-hand drive body, which was reportedly uh, part of their development process, and they were going to crush it. So the club bought it, and the guy, if translation wasn't lost, said he fitted all the stuff back to it to demonstrate the function of the vehicle, from seats to folding roof to emergency pop-up bar. And he had this little remote you can see, and he could do it as it's standard, or he could show how it popped up in emergency. Uh, very cool. I don't know whose house that's getting kept at when they're not at meetings, but um, there's probably an unhappy wife somewhere. Um, still very cool. Um, similar mechanism to um, my 124 Cabriolet, I presume, um, although the SL appears to close all the way down, which the Cabriolets don't. Um, there's a couple of British guys next to us. There's a few Brits running around. You could hear the accents. Um, their club went over. I did contact them, and they kindly said you could jump. I could jump on the bus with them, but uh, we were staying in Dusseldorf rather than Essen um, because I understand nicer hotels were there, and we certainly had that. Um, one two four club, um, very nice guys to talk to. Um, I bought a couple of grill badges to stick on my mum's wagon. Uh, this jumper I desperately wanted, but they haven't made them just yet. Um, one two three guys are there. Um, there's this louder 201 and some other nice 201s. Um, sitting on what looked like larger rims with that light blue one. I don't know if they're 16s or what they are. Um, smarter people will know. Um, so moving into Hall 2 is where a lot of the clubs were situated. The 123 Club um, were well organised and a very pleasant bunch of people. Um, I don't know what the deal was with the... Uh, farm wagon but um, the other wagon was pretty similar there you go 250t very uncommon um, very similar to mine the astral silver black interior oris boxes uh, was a sharp looking wagon um, there's the oris boxes the guys there were very cool um, had a good chat to some of them um, generous to my youngest son um, picked up all sorts of bits and pieces and I had to buy one two three um, German club shirt off them. And the 114 guy, uh, you can see I'm talking to there, they painted this one in all the colours available. That was great. He was another really friendly guy. Um, the M100 group, um, not much conversation there. Um, unfortunately, it's the 600s always seem to dominate the group and the, I don't know, the 6.9s end up the poor brothers. Um, that may be my inferiority complex. But a um, couple of nice 600s there. Um, and again, all sorts of um, customizers and products. Um, an M102 in there. I can't remember what this was even about. Um, I don't think I found an English translation of what the story was, but this is actually very similar to my own 460 in that um, magma red or whatever that color is um, in the old 460. Doesn't have the fiberglass wheel flares on the push. Um, this is cool. Uh, the shoots, the underbody spray. 
Um, I wish I'd found these guys before I did my wagon. Um, so it's cool, just something for, you know, all the classic car guys here. Um, a lot of little groups there representing what they do. Um, and parts galore, um, you know, selling some rare parts, sell model shops everywhere, um, guys selling all sorts of stuff. Um, there's guys selling door cards, dash retrims, uh, sun visors. Um, all three was the primarily Porsche, but uh, there's some cool cars in there. Uh, this Koenigsegg was ballistic. I think it's one of two or something of these CCXR all carbon fiber monsters. Um, that's just um, Troppo, that, that's, that's cool. Uh, sitting next to the Gullwing. Um, a few 500Es for sale. Um, 66,000 euro. I mean, there were 10,000 of those made. It was more of them made than 6.9s. Um, some very nice um, Pagodas and 113s. Um, and this one was the electric one. Um, and a lot of our cars may end up down this road, whether we like it or not, if it keeps them on the road. Um, a lot of work's obviously gone into that. Um, looked great. So, I mean, interesting considerations for the electrics, like, you know, um, they don't end up with diffs, I imagine. Um, it doesn't have a gear shifter. It's got a little rotary dial there for park, drive, and reverse. Um, be interesting to know how that car drove. Um, I can probably imagine it starts at least every time you get in it. <laughs> Um, this is that group and the efforts they go to to restore the pagodas, um, very impressive. Um, that's how we'd all like to restore our cars. Um, price not considered. So continued plethora of cars here, I mean just row after row after cars that if you saw in your neck of the woods, you'd be very impressed. Lots of SLSs, um, Black Series. Um, there were about 13 or 14 goings, I've probably said. Um, those 111 Cabriolets, again, I just can't get over them. There's a 500 SLC rally over the one of the early Contages, which look really cool. Um, now we're on the other side of that, Koenigsegg and the Gullwing in Hall 3. <clears throat> um, so there'd be areas that weren't vendors but just individual salespeople. And why that does not have a radiator, I'm not sure. All these pagodas were about 200 something thousand euro. 125,000, 125,000. Yeah, something more than that. Uh, these classics, again, this is not my forte. I couldn't even tell you the chassis codes for these things, but a lot of effort's been put into those cars. Um, 190 SLs and 300 SLs. Um, a couple of nice 124 Cabriolets. CL65, a 215, some 140s, they, they weren't that flash. There was one really nice 140 in one of the Hurley. Which hall was that? Maybe hall four. And you just don't see these cars in our little country. Um, so this one here is the central hall. Um, in the middle of it's got the CIHA, uh, the coordinating groups. Um, base, you can see there that sort of castle in the top right. This group had some crazy cars. Uh, the 6x6, the SLS, the SLR, Gullwing, Lawn Delay. Um, you saw one of those cars and you're happy for a car show. Um, So I might mute the audio at one point because they um, they do start that thing up. Um, he must have had a good mate 
rock up, he started up. I started talking to the salesperson about the lawn delay, and my understanding is there's about 25 to 30 lawn delays that were made. Um, you know, most of the dictators and despots have one. Um, I would love one. But um, this one came from Africa, was all she would say. Um, and I hinted it was from the last king of Scotland. Um, and uh, she said, oh, it's come from Africa. So that's all she had to say. Um, now, what was interesting is that this car cost less reportedly than the Gullwings. I think she said about 1.6 million euro, um, which I'm surprised by for, you know, 2,000 Gullwings and then 28 lawn delays. Uh, the 6x6 is cool, um, the ultimate apocalypse vehicle until you have to push it because you've run out of petrol. But um, they were fabricated because the Australian Army wanted 6x6 vehicles. They've always had them in Land Rovers. And when we put the order in for the G-Wagons, they made that and then I think AMGs run with that. So you're welcome. The Australians are the reason the 6x6 exists. That's my take. Um, just great cars, this whole stand. Um, and I like the show because the, the guys know that 99% um, of the punters there are not going to be buying 1.5 million euro lawn delays, but um, they personally, I don't chat to all of them, they're all friendly enough and didn't fob us off. Now I'm going to mute myself. 1.8 million, the lady said. Whereas the 600 came from Africa, which is probably. So I was dictating at the time at the time so I wouldn't have to put it together but uh, it didn't sound clear enough so that's why I'm redoing it at home. Um, Hall 4 had some of the nicest cars in there um, of all brands. Um, you got 280,000 euro. Looks like original leather. Um, I don't know if that was a low kilometer car. The paint looked like it just rolled off. Um, unless they've um, paint corrected that. Um, there's another AMG GT black um, in the background. <laughs> Some of these Ferraris are crazy. I'm not a Ferrari guy. Um, I said a Mura on the left, the lime green thing. Just really impressive. Um, so the girls will see your poster there for five euro. Um, I'm getting mine framed up, they were gigantic. Um, now the other halls were um, sort of a hodgepodge of collections, SL65s, SLS um, Blacks, um, other groups. Now I'm curious on maybe what the demonstration cost for certain areas. Um, had AMG badges on this thing with its Evo 2 wheels, but I don't think so. Uh, G-Wagon Cabriolets, they stopped making them in 2012. I remember the run out of these things when I was at the Frankfurt Motor Show. I happened to be in Europe for some professional training. I went to the Frankfurt Motor Show with a mate and saw the final ones. Now this 140 was really nice, um, beautiful color. Um, I had to vacate this area because this lovely classic, I had my backpack on me and it inadvertently knocked over that wooden display sign. Now it didn't strike the car, but I got quite twitchy and I kind of understand they wanted to boot me. Um, so as much as I love looking at that 140, um, I didn't stick around there too long. Um, Dad had one in the 90s, I just love those cars, but local kilometer ones are hard to find that haven't been molested here in Australia. Um, these other halls had whole bunch of cars um, by various individuals and so forth. Um, all brands, they weren't really specific. So the SLSs were there, a beautiful car, about 2,200 of those things were made. Um, that's compared to about 10,000 SLSs. Um, sound fantastic, that motor. So the Stretch Tech Flosser to a right hand drive 600. I'm not sure what that's about. 500,000 euro. Amazing. 
that's a cool heck flosser. So the old Cabriolet G-Wagons, they're all about 200,000 euro. Uh, they're really commanding a premium. There's an old 460 Cabriolet that's been done up. Um, brochure guys, uh, this guy's a nice guy. Um, people for hermetically sealed carports. Um, car trailers, um, still using nice cars to demonstrate them. Um, I think they're fuel pump sort of guys. Um, they did cooling systems. Um, the tyre guys has usual... Now these electric 116s I've been looking for a while and I didn't have the guts to pull the trigger but I'm going to have to email that guy. Um, the keys, I wish I'd kept taking a set of keys and would have got some blanks done. Um, all sorts of stuff. Now in various sites they were selling cars. There was one main hall. Um, here's a 6.9. Um, I think this one had the electric rear seat. Uh, Velour, which we didn't really see much of in Australia. I don't know what that guidance thing is or if that's a phone in the centre console. Um, what can I read? 124,000 Ks, uh, 58,000 euros sold. Um, I'm just demonstrating the electric rear seats, which you can see in the back. Um, had US climate control, a um, little bit odd. That was the second car like that, um, and I thought that only went to the US, that system, um, which I believe was notorious for getting more problems than the standard manual boxes that we've got. Um, cool 126 AMG with genuine headers on it by the look of it. Um, 160,000 euro. Um, all sorts of gadgets, Recaro seats, uh, the steering wheel, some sort of fridge or something between the seats. I'm sorry about the reflection. This is hard to actually film this stuff. I don't want to touch the people's car or bloody bang my SLR camera on the, the paint. Um, it would have been a real gangster rolling around in that back in the 80s. So you can see the heads um, on that thing, the large TMG ones which I saw um, at the AMG planet of Falterbuck when I went there for a visit. This trip, um, the dual fans on this motor. Oh, the bottom of the town, this must have been filming it two days in a row. There you go, the fridge. Fridge gone both ways. There you go. Folding backwards and forwards. I'm um, on the fiberglass spoiler rather than the rubber lip spoiler we saw on mainly the 70s stuff. Anyway, it's a kind of cool car to have a look at. So sorry, you can look at it again. Um, this one here, I'm not sure if this was done officially, an M117 in the 123. It's got the Ronal 5 spokes. Um, I wasn't sure if this was an AMG thing or just a, a homage. What have we got? 50,000 euro. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think that was an original one rather than somebody's efforts. Um, interior looks pretty swish. Um, another hard spoiler rather than the rubber sausage one. I don't know what that article says. And more cars for sale. This changed over the few days I went there. Uh, different cars coming in and out as they sell. Um, what's that? A SLK32 V6 compressor. Well, 600 in there. 600s didn't maybe get the respect I would have thought they'd gotten. Um, another G Wagon Cabriolet, um, probably a couple of hundred grand on that one. It's interesting when they bought the 460s to Australia, there was actually a few Cabriolets. And, um, you know, we've had our 460 since 1985, and so I've always kept tabs on them. Um, you've 
almost, I don't recall the last time I saw a genuine Australian. I think they've all rusted into the ground. Uh, but people have started bringing them in from other countries now, the 460 Cabriolets, and asking higher and higher fees for them. I'm not sure how the Pontons fare in the German market. Um, are they renowned or not? Um, oh, just some 126s and um, taxi coloured 124. Got a Humvee next to the 124. This was a nice uh, 124C. I spoke to this guy from Poland. He just sold the car. Um, he must make it his business to do 124s up. He'd fit 500 E alloys to it. They're a bit bigger than usual. Um, he said he might be able to help me get a Sportline gear shifter, which I need for my Cabriolet. But he'd done this up nicely. The paint looked awesome. Um, I've trained my kids well not to go putting their hands on people's cars. Um, I don't know what the market is for hearses, but um, tickles somebody's fancy. Five point six. Yeah, this one oh eight. So it's got a US badging four point five on it, and they've put the M one one seven in there. Um, I don't know how that sits with people. Uh, the outdoor areas, there was a few of them there. Um, the Trasco convertible um, 126 or the SEC was interesting. Um, Trasco, you know, I'm not an expert, but you know, they used to build all sorts of craziness. I think they made the 1000 SEL in the 126s. Um, it wasn't a bigger engine, but they just called it that because they fit every option under the sun back in the 80s. Um, so this, this had the Trasco badges on it. You can see all that, um, I don't know, that Louis Vuitton or whatever the hell brand that is, um, plastered all over it. I don't know, so you can have a proper four-seat convertible. Um, the thing probably bends like paper in the wind. But uh, an uncommon rare car. Uh, have a look at the Trasco 1000 SEL, I think it was. And when you're doing some Googling later. I wonder what the roof looked like that on that folded back. Um, that was a nice one, two, three, that one. Some of these cars have pretty low kilometers. Um, it seemed a bit mean. Some of them were sitting out there on the day it was raining. You know, these 30,000 K cars. Um, I wouldn't subject my more shabby cars to that, those elements. Really nice car. I love that silver blue um, color. Whenever you see those intact blue Cruel badges, you know, their car's been looked after. Uh, the dash was all intact, I suppose it's not a problem for you Europeans. Uh, steering wheel's got all the dimples, but all our Australian cars, you can tell the abused ones because all the dash is cracked and, and the rest. Um, a nice uh, 200, um, really nice shape. It's funny, some of the cars are really low kilometre and they're put on display and um, geez, the guys could have run a vacuum. That, this is a nice car, but there were some ones that, um, geez, if you go into the effort of selling it, you would have thought you could spend 15 minutes vacuuming it at least. Um, that inflatable thing, buddy, came down, I was flopping on those cars. <laughs> That's only 28,000 Ks, that 124. Yeah, it's strange that people buy these cars and don't drive them at all. So, um, second day um, was pretty rainy. Nice 460 there next to the 124 CE. Um,
some of the cars you've just seen were still there. Um, that uh, candle was pretty cool. Um, I like that. Uh, the big camper vanning scene in Germany, um, it seems, or Europe. Uh, nice 6.3. Um, 52,000 euro. Probably didn't see, only that was only the second one there. I think that I saw over the two days. Um, I don't know if they were factory or home job curtains, but um, the car was options, sunroof, electric windows. Um, nice IL stretched 7 series. Um, 600 in there right hand drive 75,000 euro oh maybe we need to find that I don't know what's the price difference or is that for a different vehicle sometimes they put the stickers for the different cars no there you go 75,000 euro for a right hand drive 600 you know we'd probably be paying about um, ooh, 120 130,000 euro for a Slightly worn 600, um, the old 140 CLs or SECs. Um, wasn't necessarily the most pristine of examples, but stuff you might not see as much nowadays. It's a nice color on the SL. Um, my boys go straight to the 116 and probably go to the back. There's a pre update with the um, antenna on the front rather than the back. Looks nice without the tint. Um, and that zircon blue on parchment is a great combination. Um, the car park was interesting. You know, you, I always like coming to Germany and seeing Merck taxis. That's an anomaly for probably anyone but Europeans. Uh, but when you're leaving the car park, you see all these cool cars. Um, this was actually half empty at this point, but there goes the Finney. I'm pulling out of the main main entry point. Um, one, two, four wagons were quite plentiful there. The Europeans love the wagon; it's great. Oh, one eleven, I think it is. Um, there's another one hiding over there. I think you got free parking if you had a classic in this car park one. So lo nice wagon here, um, 280 TE, um, had 15 inch alloys on it. Um, I like the plate, hats off. Um, don't need to pimp out the radiator grill, uh, but 15 inches, you probably could have put the nicer old school caps on it. Anyway, everyone's got their different opinions. Uh, SL600, I've got to check that Rego. So that's that British celebrity that buys all the uh, cars and talks about them. Um, and then, at the car park, the 6.9. I don't care about the other stuff. Um, this, I think, belonged to the 123 Club bloke, because when I spoke to him, showed him a picture of my silver 6.9 and my silver wagon. He says, I have a 6.9. It is in the car park. So I think this is his, and it looks like it's a sale. Halt. Um, I wonder how 6.9 values are going. Oh, it's got the French um, orange lights on them. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I didn't talk too long. Um, I'd love to go back and can highly recommend, in April, going to Essen Techno Classic, um, for anyone considering it.